call the Kitty Hawk Town Council to order this Monday, October 1, 2018 at Kitty Hawk Town Hall, 6 p.m. Thank those folks that are watching later and those that are attending tonight. Would you <clears throat> join us for a moment of silence and the Pledge of Allegiance, please? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, next would be the approval of the agenda, but we have to amend it um, to delete 7A, which it was scheduling a public hearing. That's been tabled by the planning board. Do I hear a motion to approve the amended agenda? Motion to approve, Mr. Mayor. Second. <clears throat> All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? There are none. Next, we have a presentation. A police officer has been with us for a very long time. Sergeant Jeff Wiggins, 15 years. Thank you. Thank you. We, we appreciate it very much. <clears throat> and uh, if you've been here 15 years, you've been through enough storms, you kind of knew what to do, didn't you? <laughs> 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 we did, sure did. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Next is public comment. Uh, Lynn? No one signed up. Sir. No one signed up. Anyone want to speak at public comment? Let the record show no one came forward. Uh, consent agenda. Do I hear a motion to approve the consent agenda? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? There are none. Seven was removed. New business, a government zoning district. This one kind of snuck up behind us. And basically, let me take that. All, right. All we're doing here is last meeting we talked about uh, spot zoning and the attempt we were trying to do for the new property we own out on 158. Um, but it looks like spot zoning is not a good way to go, yet we still desire to make sure a future council doesn't encounter what we encountered with the property we swapped. So town staff has come up with a recommendation, and I'm going to make that uh, recommendation as a motion. It's staff's recommendation that rather than creating a new district, the official zoning map be updated um, as described in a uh, memorandum provided to each of us. And basically what that's doing, instead of rezoning the things, uh, it'll stay residential as it is now, but anybody that's looking to the future to build anywhere or buy anywhere close to that piece of property, if they go to the zoning map, there'll be something that says this is town-owned property, and with this, we're also going to have all town-owned property so designated so that any town-owned property 
even though it may have a structure, police station, or something on it, people will know, and we won't leave this for future generation councils. All in agreement? Yes. Okay. Does the motion have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any further discussion? It's a proper way to go, I think. I like that. <clears throat> Hearing none. All in favor was aye. Opposed was none. All right. That took care of that little. <clears throat> that sure did come back to bite us a little bit. <laughs> All right. Uh, town manager. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Good evening, members of the town council. Uh, tonight, I'd like to do something a little bit different. I'd like our de de department heads to come up and give you kind of an, an overview of sort of that we're at the year of, into the, our busy season with the tourism and, and things, and things are starting to slow down just a little bit. Um, so I'll have, uh, if I could, if I could first have Chief uh, Johnson uh, come forward and provide a brief update about uh, the police department. Main thing is no, no uh, issues this year at the intersection with uh, cooperating agencies on direct and traffic. Uh, this year, all the um, agencies that usually participate, participated did not see a, an increase in it. Sundays, as you can tell, were, were pretty slow. Uh, we did see a decrease in accidents uh, in that area. Usually 60% of our accidents in the t town throughout the year occur from Ocean Boulevard to the foot of the bridge. Um, so that's a pretty tremendous amount. We did see accidents decrease. Um, as far as that, you know, we, we had a pretty good year in um, overall, just the accidents there, and um, overall it's just a normal summer. Did, uh, did some of the rental agencies change their schedule for a Friday uh, versus <coughs> Saturday, Sunday? Because it seemed to me like there was less traffic this year. It seems to be less traffic, and that's always a big question, but no. Um, no? It, it, it's hard to get staff for that day. Uh, I know we're dealing with the rental agencies uh, myself. It is, um, it, it's, it's not something that they want to go to. I know it's been talked about. Um, I, I don't know if they're going to go to it or not, but some do do it. You do see, you do, do now have, we have Keys Real Estate, if anybody's seen that, it's a rental company. They allow, and now you have, uh, they allow partials. So people can come in on Monday and leave on Wednesday. You got VRBO and uh, what's the other one? There's another one that's a rental. They're doing more of that because people, it's more affordable for people to do half weeks. So I think part of that and a little bit of Friday is, is what, what we're seeing. Okay. As far as crime, uh, we're still seeing a steady increase in the opioid issue and the heroin addiction. We are attacking that the, um, with our drug enforcement officer in the county. Uh, I will say that the overdoses are continuing. Um, we had one at a restaurant recently here in Kitty Hall. Uh, we've had numerous I don't publicize them in, in anything, so um, it is still an issue, and we're, we're, we're trying to tackle that as best, as best we can, along with not only with enforcement, with an education, trying to help these people mm -hmm. um, get get the help they need. All right. Thank, All right. You. Thank you. Very good. Thank, Thank you, Steve. Thank you. Chief Talley from the Fire Department. <clears throat> good evening, Council, Mayor. Um, We've had a pretty big, busy season over the summer. I'd say compared to last year, uh, we've gone up around 25% call volume, um, especially in the month of June. We're trying to look at those numbers and see what's causing those influxes. But, uh, we're still looking at those numbers. Um, overall, uh, very successful in terms of safety. Uh, we've had some challenging events. We've taken some bumps and bruises. Um, but overall, it's been very successful. So. Really this year our, our theme was, was safety and we're trying to accomplish that with more and better training. So we've been doing a lot of that and we still have a lot to come. Um, so we're looking forward to that. Some key events, um, as far as the volunteers are going, uh, our numbers are increasing each month. We're <coughs> averaging about two to three recruitments uh, and applications are really going out the door. So that's promising. Um, the firefighter certification school started last month. We have Miss Audrey Ansink that's in, in that class. Hopefully she'll graduate in February. Um, that'll make her a firefighter one and two certified. So that'll really help us out. Um, and then we had last month an actual two volunteers that have become red tags. That means they're full firefighter duties as volunteers. So that's a big help. Um, as of late, really big accomplishment. Uh, Captain Mike Bassalone 
Um, he was accepted into National Fire Academy uh, Executive Fire Officer Program. Uh, that's a four-year graduate level program, very competitive. Uh, they only accept about 224 a year national, nationally. So there's usually about five, 600 applicants, and he was one of them. So that's pretty good stuff. Uh, some upcoming events. Um, we got that open house next month, or actually next week, uh, in terms of bringing people inside and uh, taking them on tours and doing some fire prevention activities for the children. So that'll be some good stuff there. Um, we have a fire officer leadership training that's going on later this month. We're bringing a retired fire chief from Chapel Hill, uh, 20 something years, just as a fire chief and experience. Uh, so he'll be sharing some good knowledge and experience with us. We're also coordinating some training efforts with Curatuck County, trying to share some resources. We're doing a fire or a uh, vehicle extrication course later this month. Uh, it's a two day course, it's a certification. Uh, so it'll hopefully help us out in terms of coordinating our efforts and sharing resources. As far as that's, that's about something that brings us up to date. You said the calls were up. What kind of calls? Across the board. Uh, vehicle accidents were up. Um, fire calls were down in terms of structural fires. Okay. Um, fire alarms, on the other hand, seem to be increasing. Uh, so we're trying to get a handle on that. A lot of those were just uh, repeats as well. Um, certain businesses are having repeat calls that we're trying to uh, narrow down so we can stop. So that, that would be... Uh, some sort of automated fire alarm, not somebody pulling it. Automated, correct. Yeah, okay. We don't get that many fires, so. Uh, it's staying mainly uh, consistent throughout the years. Yeah. Gotcha. So it's maintaining, I should say. Uh, Mr. Bassalone, did, does that take him away from you for four years? No. no How does that work? No, it, it takes four years. He would go each year for two weeks. <laughs> Uh, on campus to uh, mm -hmm. Emmitsburg. Um, after that two weeks, he has six months to complete a, what they call a applied research project, which is connected to any kind of issues the town is having. Mm -hmm. um, so he tries to figure out this problem to provide recommendations. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Thank, you Thank you, Chief. Thank you, Chief. Thank you. Liliana, our finance officer. In finance, we started the process of the audit three weeks ago, and so far, we have completed our very successful finance fiscal year for this time. The audit will be finished in two weeks, and hopefully we'll have a report with financial statements for you next meeting in November. Currently, we are in the process to collect our total expenditure from Hurricane Florence, and we will submit this information to their county. If countywide, we meet the threshold of $124,000, then we would qualify for FEMA reimbursement. So far, I think it will. will. That's, all. Sure. That's only the pre-emergency, the planning well, phase category. Right. category. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> I didn't see us report any damage in Kitty Hall. No, we did not. But on category B prevention, we incur some expenditures. Yeah, the because pumps, we had the pumps and things correct, of that nature. Correct. The pumps and okay. some overtime for the first responders. Right. Mm -hmm. So, right. so we, that does count. Correct. Yes, okay. it's up mm -hmm. I right. should count. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Uh, Willie Midget from Public Works. As y'all know, I love coming up here. <laughs> uh, Mr. Mayor, members of council, just a few things was going on through the summer with our department and the town in general. Uh, we had a pretty uneventful summer on our end. Uh, things went fairly well. We did have the one rain event, which required us to pump in a few areas, which uncovered a couple minor issues that we are getting take care, taking care of at this time, hopefully. Um, one thing I did find out that we realized this time when we had to pump, we had an answer whether or not we could pump within a couple hours because we had a pre-approved pumping plan. And we also had a approval to go ahead and pump after Florence should we have needed it. So that, that's doing what it was intended to do. And uh, that's really good to see. Also, after we, as you recall, in the spring, we completed a ditch and canal clean out. And what I have saw through the summer, whenever it rained, that made a big difference in the village 
with any drainage. Um, we, of course, when the sound was pressed up, it's not going anywhere. But once the water went down, it went out pretty quick, and I, I think that is attributed to that ditch cleaning. And we are going to try and get some more grant funds to continue that this fall and into the spring, possibly. Also, uh, one thing, another thing the, the event showed us when it came to rain that we need to work on some of our driveway culverts and some of our culverts under a few of the roads. Uh, starting tomorrow, we have a contractor that's going to start cleaning some of the culverts. He's going to start in the estates and then do Pine Hill Lane back behind the Chevrolet place, which were two of the worst places we had. Uh, and once we complete that, we'll evaluate some other areas and we'll go as we need, as we need to to get those other places cleaned up. Uh, we're gonna also look at the ditches in these areas as well. We might need to have them shaped up. Mm -hmm. uh, we had our large item pickup last week. That is the third one for this year from our new pilot program we kind of did to do it in-house instead of the county doing it, we did it ourselves. Uh, it seems to be going well, and at this, right now I'm gonna say we're gonna continue that into next year. Uh, our next scheduled pickup is going to be November 26th for this year. Uh, it was originally scheduled for the 19th, but Thanksgiving's early this year, so I uh, had to do a little work around for that. So, and we'll publish the new dates for next year once we firm them up. Uh, chipping service, we're still going to do that twice a year. The next one will be October 15th uh, throughout the town, and then we'll get, do it again in the spring. And one other thing, the bathhouse will close for the season on October 29th and reopen in the spring. Uh, the water will still be on for the surfers to wash their surfboards off and stuff, but the house, the house itself will be closed. And that's all I have, unless anyone has any questions. Um, yeah, I'm going to take, I didn't expect this, so I'm going to take this opportunity to bring something up that I already had on my list, and that is, uh, Pumps. When we need pumps, in the past, we've been able to get them by renting them without a problem. But that's beginning to be a problem because everybody else is getting on that same bandwagon and there's only so many pumps. Uh, in this particular case, we were looking, I was trying to get enough pumps to do everything. But what we find out was a contractor that we normally go to, Virginia Beach had ordered 10 pumps, wanted 10 more. And he didn't have any. So Willie had, well, he, I think the contractor helped you find a source of six inch pumps vice eight inch pumps. Now where I'm going with this is we've avoided trying to buy a pump because of the cost. It's, with the equipment and the pump, uh, it's about $70,000 each. And then you gotta maintain it, which I don't guess is that much. But I think we need to start thinking for budgeting purposes about whether we want to at least buy a pump now, maybe another one later, because the way things are going, we may not get pumps if we're not really Johnny on the spot and see it coming in a timely fashion. Um, it may be too late. Mm -hmm. So I want you to think about that, and I want you to kind of think about it and bring it to us during budget time. <clears throat> and I'm sitting here listening to, to what Willie's telling us, all the things that Public Works doing. You came to the town in what, 2005? Six. Six, right after I came on. When you came to the town, I know you were mowing grass, just moved in that building, right? Uh, okay. I was here when we moved, so yes. Okay, and, and um, it was what, one path, the Woods Path? Woods Road, Twyford was under construction, Sandy Run was under construction. First and, and now we've, we've added four times a year pickups, um, I guess where I'm going is, since you came on board, the job, job description that you came to us with has expanded, what, double? The different paths, you got one going to Walmart, you got Twyford. Mileage wise, yes. You see where I'm going with this? Mm -hmm. That job has expanded exponentially. <clears throat> His requirements and, and what he needs to do and get going has expanded. You see where I'm going with this question? Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you. Thank we appreciate you. all you do. Thank you. I got a question real quick, Dave. Mm -hmm. Willie, is there a chance to get, I think it's called a contract on demand, 
that they would sign that says in the event you're guaranteed to get your 10 pumps? There's one company that will do it. Okay. Uh, and there. Yeah, I've looked at it. I haven't really gone there because that's a very small company, and so it's it may take a little time to get them, but they will guarantee them. I think going the way we go now, because the company we use is so large, uh, they can get them. It just may take a little bit longer. They'll have to bring from other parts of the country, but they will do that. And they actually did that for Matthew for us. They brought some down from up north. Um, I'm just asking a question. I wasn't trying to get in what you do because you do a great job. I'm just no, but there there is something to that that I need to add. And I happen to know that um, the Park Service couldn't get pumps to pump because the vendor they were going to didn't want them in anything other than fresh water. So there are some there are some companies that won't let you have them if you're going to pump salt. Is that correct? That's correct. But I do. The one company I mentioned, they do have something with Nags Head, which is probably where you've heard that going. Uh, so something we could look into, but even if we don't have, even they don't even bring them to us, we're still going to be up for that money. At least going yeah. this way, we have them in our parking lot. Okay. Right. All right. All right. But we do have to be careful who we've picked because some don't want you to pump salt water, and that won't work for us. <laughs> Either side. All right. Thank you. Just uh, one more announcement from Human Resources. Um, on Wednesday, October 24th, from 8.30 to 10.30 um, at the fire department, they'll be giving out flu shots, um, and that's provided by the health department, but you'll need to bring your health insurance card. And then if you want a free flu shot, uh, that'll take place here at Town Hall on November 1st from 3 p.m. to 6 p.m., and that's for, for adults that are 18 years and older, and there is no insurance required, and I believe that's provided by Vidant um, Healthcare. So if you want your free flu shot, come Thursday, November 1st uh, here at Town Hall. Um, that is the only announcements I have. Um, I do have one other announcement. Um, last month, I believe, our human resources in the, in the lines of training and education, our human resources, our management assistant slash human resources um, director received a credentialed from the International Public Management Association for Human Resources, so you have to pass a test, and so we've got the best of the best, I think, in that position. So congratulations to Melody Clompton on that. Um, and that concludes the, um, any reports that I have this evening. Okay, Mr. Attorney. My fiscal year reporting, we didn't get sued and we didn't have to sue anybody. <laughs> 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 Yeah, but I'm going to call it this fiscal year so we don't jinx it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, town council. Jeff, you got anything for no, me? No, I don't. Well, All I have is my gratitude and thanks to everybody for doing a good, good job and working hard for the town. I have nothing. All right. This, Andy, this is a great idea to have the department head speak. They all did a great job. I appreciate it. And, just to clarify, the flu shots are provided by the Outer Banks Hospital. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. And who do you work for? I work for Vita. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. I got a couple of things to bring to council. Uh, one of them we, we need to kind of get out of the way, and that's uh, we have a wreath request uh, from a veteran to asking the town to uh, supply $2,000 a year uh, for uh, planting wreaths on veterans' graves on Christmas. Um, we have a cemetery that he, within the town, Austin Cemetery, that he's uh, pinging onto. The problem is Austin Cemetery is a closed cemetery. That's not open to the public. There are veterans in there. Someday I expect I'll be there myself. But it's not an open uh, cemetery, and I don't, think the town, I don't think the town people should be paying to do that in a cemetery that's not open to the public. Um, so I'm not disposed to put town money towards that. How do you feel? I agree. I, agree. I, I don't think it's fair. I mean, if, if like, I'm on the 
committee there for the cemetery, and since it is a close to a guideline of who can get in and who can't, that I don't think it's fair to uh, to take tax money to to for something that is only going to affect a small minority of the people of Kitty Hawk. Okay, and and us living relatives that are allowed to be there uh, pay yearly to maintain it, and we also plant. Uh, uh, flags on each grave site that has uh, a veteran there. Uh, I think you do most of that, don't you? I do. I do the flags mainly. I think the, uh, there's a veterans group that comes and uh, places the flags. I think there's a, you know, they do it amongst themselves. I think. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. But as far as the flags up and down and stuff, I do. But we do it. We do it. That's right. Somebody is assigned to, to gotcha. that. Yes. All right. I agree with you, Gary. What's I agree with you. Agree with you? All right. So. You know where to take that. All right. Thank you. All right. And the last thing I have is uh, I had a letter from um, Town of Kill Devil Hills to the Board of Commissioners, and basically what they were saying was the Board of Commissioners are looking at uh, some flooding that they had this last uh, non-event storm, I guess. But uh, they're talking about putting together some sort of a working group to discuss it throughout the whole uh, county. And Kill Devil Hills is recommending that a working group be put together for the county unincorporated as well as all of uh, the municipalities. Uh, I've got s some reservations about that, but I thought I'd bring it out, let you know it's out there. Um, if they really start putting something together and want us to join, then I'll bring it back to you. But it's out there, and we'll see where it goes. And my, my reservations are Kitty Hawk's drainage problems are so unique. The bowl, the sound, all of it's so different from the problems they're having in the other parts of the county. I'm not sure we'd be a good fit, but we'll see what they come up with, okay? All right. I don't have anything else, so public comment. Anybody left to comment? All right. Motion to adjourn, does it have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Never none. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.